O.J. Simpson chose to commit a second crime more than 10 years after he was found not guilty of the double homicide of his ex-wife and her friend. This new crime was connected to his notorious case. After fighting prostate cancer for a while, Simpson was found guilty in 2007 of robbing a memorabilia dealer at gunpoint. His death was confirmed on Thursday. Simpson received a 33-year prison sentence, but after just nine years, he was granted parole. The disgraced football player led a bunch of criminals that broke into room 1203 of the Palace Station Hotel in Las Vegas on September 13, 2007, stealing sports memorabilia from sellers Bruce Fromong and others. Following his arrest, Simpson had claimed to be receiving things that had been stolen from him. Tom Riccio, who was with Simpson that weekend, said, I called OJ. The memorabilia included items taken and sold to cover the money owed to the Ronald Goldman family after Simpson was found civilly liable despite a criminal acquittal for the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Goldman, ABC News reported. Look, Tom, this is not memorabilia, remarked OJ. These are items that I personally own that were taken from me. The ring my late wife left behind and that I intended to present to my kid as well as the football I was carrying under my arm while I ran for 2,000 yards. He would not stop talking about a picture that J. Edgar Hoover had signed, in which the man had said, I was a big fan, a fine young man. O.J. was the main character in the Trial of the Century that captured the attention of the entire world in 1995. He and his well-known defense lawyer, Robert Kardashian, battled accusations and proof that he had killed people. Following his acquittal, Simpson was eventually held civilly liable for the killings and had to compensate the families of the victims with $33.5 million. Some of this money was obtained from things that had been taken from Simpson's residence. Simpson came up with a scheme to recover his Heisman Trophy, his wife Nicole's wedding band, and the football from one of his winning games at the time of the robbery. Alfred Beardsley was informed by Rico that he had a potential buyer after he learned of another dealer who possessed a vast collection of Simpson sports memorabilia from his time as a Buffalo Bills player. Beardsley persuaded Fromong to participate in the possible transaction, and together they transferred the goods to the hotel room per Rico's request. The day before the heist, Simpson attended his friend Thomas Scotto's wedding at the Little White Chapel as best man blissfully oblivious to the fact that he would soon be arrested and taken to jail. Around 7.38, Simpson and five other robbers entered the room following a rehearsal supper for his friend's wedding. He addressed Fromong and Beardsley there, informing them that no one was permitted to leave. Rather, Simpson arrived at the meeting accompanied by other guys, all of whom were armed. You think you can steal my s asterisk asterisk t? Simpson was heard yelling in recordings of the theft that were made later. Simpson acknowledged stealing things that were originally taken from him after his 2007 arrest, but he denied ever breaking into Fromong's hotel room. His collaborators grabbed his artifacts, including autographed baseballs from Pete Rose and lithographs of Joe Montana, as he was doing it. Simpson's accomplices were apprehended as well, Walter Alexander, who carried a gun to the robbery received a probationary term. Another accomplice, Clarence Stewart, was given a 15-year prison term but was later freed after accepting a plea bargain. Probation was imposed on Ryan Braun and Charles Nilich, while probation was also imposed on Michael McClinton, the fifth robber who brought a gun and videotaped the entire operation. Simpson was given the harshest punishment possible, 33 years in prison, after being found guilty of the heist. Fromong stated that he had long since forgiven Simpson for the deed ten years after the heist. After learning that Simpson would be granted parole later that year, Fromong, then 63, remarked, It's just too bad we didn't talk it out. None of this would have occurred if he had just said, Everyone out, me and Bruce are going to talk, in the hotel room. Parole commissioners decided to release him based on his release plans, community support, lack of past conviction, and minimal likelihood of committing a crime. Before the hearing ended, Fromung stated that one of the individuals who was with the former football star did point a gun at him during the altercation. 
He is a good man, the memorabilia trader said, adding that his friend of almost twenty-seven years deserved to be freed. He erred in judgment. Fromong had brain damage from a series of heart attacks he had shortly after the crime. He lost everything and was forced into bankruptcy. He had before admitted to the Sunday Mirror. I could have died that night. All they had to do was squeeze the trigger, and I would have been gone. Two days after the heist, I suffered a serious heart attack. I had to endure four such situations. Twice, I lost consciousness. Fromon claimed that during the heist, Simpson ordered a man pointing a gun squarely at him to put the gun down. Fromon has expressed forgiveness to Simpson and now refers to him as a good man and close friend. As he has done throughout the more than hour-long parole hearing, Simpson adamantly maintained that his goal was to recover property that rightfully belonged to him, and that he had no intention of hurting anyone. He said that throughout the crime, he never threatened anyone or waved a gun at them. I've served my time. Inmate number 1027820 stated, I've done it as well and respectfully as I think anybody can. Soon after the crime, a number of photos surfaced that showed Simpson partying at nightclubs with his ex-girlfriend and her friend. Pictures from the event included the Jews, as his pals lovingly referred to him, toasting with champagne in the rear of a stretch limo while clutching the bride's bouquet. Simpson passed away on Thursday. He was 76 years old. Our father, Oriental James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer on April 10th, said a post made by his family on X's official account. His kids and grandkids were all around him. The Simpson family kindly requests that you honor their requests for discretion and privacy during this time of change. According to Goldman's father, Simpson's passing merely brings to light the suffering his family has endured over the years. All I can say now is that this serves as even more evidence of my son Ron's passing, stated Fred Goldman. It serves as a fresh reminder of my son's murder as well as the length of time we have been without Ron. Prior to the killings of Brown and Goldman, Simpson, a professional football player who spent 11 seasons primarily with the Buffalo Bills, made a name for himself in the acting world. 